Okay, we're looking at so data was, from it, it, Landers, um, Telluric Antenna Station. And okay, go ahead, Eric. So this is the the solar activity. Uh, the green is the uh, Earth ionosphere waveguide. Uh, the noise level. The red is the uh, underground uh, telluric. Uh, oh, it's the uh, the, the um, there's a no one would understand the names I use for it, but the base, the signals underneath the ground, the earthquakes, what I call the earthquake signals. And the top is the uh, the vibration counter at Landers on the seismograph. Okay. So what dates do we have here? <clears throat> I forget what year, like four years ago, whatever the Haiti earthquake was. Okay. See, you can see the uh, see the months are here. Oh, gotcha. Here. Yep. The, okay. I'm gonna make sure to put page numbers on these before. And I scroll down. <clears throat> see how when the solar flux goes, these are earthquakes. We, see these vertical lines? Yep. Those are the major earthquakes of the planet. So this was Indonesia, Philippines, British Columbia, Mexico, North Mexico. This thing was something strange. So it must have been underneath the ground at Landers. This one was in Northern Cal. This was Eureka. This was Haiti. This was Mexico. This one doesn't have a name. This one doesn't have a name. This one. This one doesn't have a name. This was Sumatra. In Mexico. Salton Sea. Um, this is Mexico too. I did Baja. And uh, then it was time, but the logs are lost now, so I can't. Okay. I will go over this. Kind of seeing the correlation of solar flares and earthquake activity. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you know, peaks and earthquakes. So there's peaks. Another and solar surge and earthquake. Solar surge. See when, there's, see when there's no solar activity? Yep. No earthquakes. What is the so see how the Earth's vibrations at Landers, how they correspond exactly to the increase in solar activity. And when the sun died down again, the vibration died down. What did the just like we had a recent uh, solar increase in solar activity? Yeah, there's been a recent increase in earthquake activity. So what did we find out with the telluric in the antenna system, the above ground and below ground? What did that? So there wasn't enough local earthquake activity to kick up the underground. Okay. So it's just basically you're looking at the the ionosphere. You can see how the ionospheric noise went up here. That's what the Japan. That's how I got the Japan earthquake. See the ionospheric noise did a thing like this. So that one in Mexico. See the green one was just for Los Angeles. Okay, so green's Area. underground. The underground. Yeah, and it was only a very narrow range. It was just for the. I only I didn't want long range. Okay. Because the green one, if the green one jumped up here, Los Angeles is going to get a 6.5 or greater earthquake. Gotcha. All right. The Earth signals only occur at 6.5 or greater. 6.5 earthquake yeah, about, magnitude? Yeah, about 6.5 or greater. That's when the ground starts to sing. So with this, the green is the singing. You'd have to hear it. It sings. Okay. But the red is the crackling. Oh. Uh, I had networks to uh, distinguish between the two. The reason for that is, <clears throat> see how they tend to correlate together? Yep. Because the Earth refracts. So this is the... This signal is the antithesis of this, so what you do is you subtract this from this to equalize it out so you know exactly when they start, when this one starts to go after subtracted from this, you know there's going to be a big earthquake in the local area. You see what uh, I'm getting at? Yep. Uh, Alex Anderson had a name for that called the barrage, uh, the barrage uh, system, where you pick up the noise on one antenna and the signal on the other, and then you take the noise antenna signal and you turn it upside down and you put it into the signal you're trying to receive and it cancels out the noise. Very good.